Philip from Hermatogo. Philip from? Hermatogo, this is the name of my Hermatogo. project, even with the... Uh, Hermatogo. Bitter, so it's the same meaning because of water that's ramming in the air. Some things. And even walking. Permatogo. <laughs> Philip from? Permatogo. This is the name of Permatogo. my project even with... Um, okay, Permatogo. Yeah. I'm from Germany, but I uh, left my country kind of 10 years ago. So <laughs> wow. yeah. I'm, I'm a traveler all over and since Corona I'm stuck here and this is why I decided to have my Permatogo project. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So you speak how many languages? Five. Five. Wow. As Germany, German, French. French and English you need to have and I understand Italian and Spanish. Oh, yeah. I was in Portugal for one and a half years. I yeah. could understand some <laughs> papaya trees and everything is just one and a half year old. One and a half year old. Do you want to come inside the doors over here? Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. So I don't have a knife, but I have a little saw. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> so he says. This farm is just one and a half year old. One and a half years old, yeah. This Everything, is yeah. The tropics where it grows as wild. I even have strawberries, so you know. Really? Really? Have a look over wow. there. Real strawberries. That's strawberries. Um, that's kind of my laboratory. I want to achieve all the different plants that are possible here in the tropics. Okay. I tried a lot of European plants like broccoli, cauliflower, and all these. And it's not really working it's out. It's not growing. I now have an Hokkaido kurs, which is quite rare around here. The, the guy's never seen an orange kurs before. <laughs> not me too. Um, so I want to, as I said, try some different things. Everybody knows Moringa, I guess? Yes, yeah. Moringa. Very so common. So I'm, I'm really doing a lot of uh, my nutrition out of Moringa and it's, really? it's an amazing plant. Yeah. And if you want to see something very unique. Uh, oh, let's go! Exciting. Have a look at this. Wow. Can I am blocking you. Wow, what is hey, this? You try to, you need to touch it. Uh, it's called horned melon. It's really wow. uh, like, a, like a pastec, like yeah. a melon. But lots so of sharp. seeds inside. Wow. And, um, this is not really ripe yet, so it needs some more time. time. I want to show you my water management system for the Permatogo as well. Uh, for the whole side of the golden eye, uh, which is out of one source you hear in the background, uh, this source is gonna be um, yeah. How, how to explain? It's a barrage. Stuck. Stocked. Yeah. yeah. Down. A little bit up here for our first basin, and this clicking noise you hear. Yeah. This is one of our first pumps. I want to show you next. So first of all, water is life. Everybody knows. Our body is consisting. 70 up to 90 percent of water. Lucky us, we have this source uh, not far away um, where there's no village before, so no pollution in the water. In the same times, we're on the mountains. Water has some level to uh, to pass, some some heights, some average. No, what's the name? Um, so right now here, this tube behind me is 30 meters long and 10 meters higher on the other barrage, uh, the dam we were visiting before. Yeah. And I want to show you our ram pump. It's, it's a name you can Google, it's a French Bayer pump, pump Bayer. And in German it's even the Widder pump. So it's the same meaning because of the water that's ramming into this pump with two two valves opening up in a certain uh, pressure. So you, you could understand it very easy like this. There's a big hose intake and a smaller hose outtake. Perfect. Let's say this is 100% and this is 30%. 70% is leaving the pump and keeping this energy to mount the other 30% up the mountain. And up the mountain here means this hose going to our chateau, uh, to our reservoir and on the top is 350 meters away 
and 80 meters higher than here. And this pump is functioning completely without electronics, without gasoline, anything else. It's just pure mechanics inside. It could build a pressure up to 5 bar. And to open it up, it's quite simple. I open up the main intake. And I open up the pump on top. Every time you hear this clicking, it's one of the valves that's compressing water in here, opening up and putting the water in here with the power of these 70% of water that's getting back to the river. So it's pure mechanical lifelong guarantee. This is even Swiss made. There are some cheaper varieties on the market as well, but the ram pump or the pump de yi, it's a um, possibility. You install once, you don't have any maintenance costs, you don't have any coverage, uh, whatever cost. You just need to jam a little bit higher in position like this pump and there's some force in the river. Normally it's a hydroelectrical plant which could use this force to produce electricity. Here we use this force themselves to pump up water to our land. I love this. As I said, this BG pump, this uh, widow pump, uh, ram pump, whatever it's called, it's not a secret, yeah? But it's one of those machines that are going into this what is called zero energy kind of field. So you use the water and the energy in the water itself. You don't use any any additional stuff. And that is why it's not that well known, because people who want to sell you a motor pump don't want to know that you know this thing is existing. So spread the world. A ram pump is a nice thing to have if you have some inclination of water. Ram pump? Ram yeah. pump. Ram pump. Oh, ram. Ram. Oh, the ram pump. Guys, I forgot to tell you, there's another simple method you can check out online. Uh, there's lots of video YouTubes, uh, YouTube videos around it. It's called vacuum pump or drum pump. Uh, Google it. It's kind of a um, metal bar barrel with some plastic hose connectors and it uses under pressure uh, lots of Malaysia guys are very clever into it so search on YouTube for drum pump or vacuum pump let's go so guys now we are arriving to the roots of our cup of trees uh, you can still see here these little uh, thorns which is wow uh, wow and maybe this is massive. Me, me and my nearly 1 meter 90 to yeah. explain nice this one. size. This is not even a big tree. I've seen bigger ones, but to be honest, here in our land is one of the, the last bigger ones. We now arrived at um, Permatogo Food Forest. I'm in here for one and a half years now. I even have a little uh, guest house shed for people who wants to visit me, who wants to join my project. So uh, everybody's welcome. You want to have a look? This is quite a uh, yeah, simple little. By the way, the bed is one of the uh, kapok mattresses made here in Togo. Wow. So, where do you want to start the tour? Oh, we are in the middle of my food forest now, which I was planted lots of food trees, like the avocado over here. It's not easy to see everything is green around, so I leave them <laughs> growing for protection. On the other side, you see the tree nursery. Have a look here. In Germany, it's called Baumschule, so school for trees. And there I planted lots of uh, different varieties from um, breadfruit tree, jackfruit tree, the cacao, the carambol tree, so star fruit. I have several star apple, I have sheremoya and wow, lots of varieties you don't find that easy. That's why I need to, to put them in here in the soil by myself. Pepinier. Yeah? Pepinier, that's right. 
Now follow me to my uh, duck elevator. Because here's the duck pond where I have some catfish inside. So um, the catfish is called mudfish. Uh, that is why he's. This fish is very uh, common of digesting. Yeah, it's digesting the manure of the ducks and it's thriving through their leftovers. So they are in there. Catfish. Yeah. And here is one white duck. Yeah, this is one white male. And the other ones are following soon if they are hearing that I'm feeding. And here they come. No, they're not coming. They, no, 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 no. They should wait on top. Mm. Ah, there's the mother with the tiny ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, as I said, slack line just barefoot because you need to have all the little muscles working together. And this is quite a nice um, sport to learn some, some balance. Huh? First of all, standing on this thing. Second of all, doing some things and even walking. Hmm? So slackline is always into your, your body center, your movement. And you can even go crazy from time to time to figure out some positions. <laughs> <laughs> the Permatogo guy who's doing tree planting and off-road riding and chopper building and Lining. <laughs> Et voilà. Yeah. Yeah, goes auto lifestyle. Yeah, we we'll start with push up. Trying to do some push ups. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So you see, it's working against your your Balance. body tension. Yeah. You see. Cool. <laughs> uh, let's try sitting down. Sitting, yeah. just sitting on it. It's an exercise as well. One to the left, one to the right. Should switch one foot a little. If I fall, don't laugh. <laughs> we are already laughing. We are waiting for you to fall. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's figuring out. You see, his his body is stabilized. Lift your legs. Yeah. Yo. Oh, yeah. First time slackline. Yeah. This is quite a thing. Have a look. <laughs> yeah. Now imagine he's in the middle of two <laughs> mountains. Now you need to stand on it, bro. You need, need to stand, stand on, on it. it. I need to stand on it. Yes. <laughs> You can stand on it and um, <laughs> from help, there help your coordination. That's the first thing you you learn with a slack lining, and this is why it's a very good exercise. As I said, try to stay with one foot, leave the other away. Go ahead, go ahead, Remy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, it's not easy. <laughs> Twenty-one years old, forty years old. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's not easy. So guys, over here you see my uh, my ducks, my farming for for duck meat <laughs> one day, and in the same time they produce a lot of manure to fertilize my my soil here around my trees. So this is why from time to time I need to give them some food that they know this is home and don't run away. You caught their wings, right? No, I never touch any animal. Uh, like this, um, they need their wings to protect their eggs by uh, by ponding, and as well to to. So as I said, the food forest here is now 18 months old. Uh, have a look on the other side. It was all like bushland before. So first of all, I decided which kind of uh, plants and trees I have to to cut to make some pathways and terraces. And this is one of those, those permaculture um, examples. Huh? I have here, this is a pamplemousse tree, so a grapefruit tree. I planted these um, papaya, Papa. just to, to have a little halfway shadow for the first one or two years until it's grown, then I could cut the papaya. The banana tree is growing here quite good as well. And next to it, there's a moringa tree and a coconut tree and a kapok tree. On the other side I planted lots of um, little leguminous trees that are just here for producing biomass that I could throw down and create all these um, nice soil out of compost. <laughs> 